Ladies and gentlemen, this is Gail Morgan welcoming you to the Libertarian Counterpoint's Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. You've heard their point, now listen to the counterpoint. Welcome to the Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. We're coming at you on May 12th, 2021. <clears throat> um, and uh, as, as uh, usual, things are pretty interesting <laughs> times, so uh, we got a lot to talk about. But before we can get to any of that, let me introduce you to our panel. In our upper left-hand corner, we have our screaming eagle of freedom, Tim Everett. He is a pilot in the state of California. And in our upper right-hand corner, we have Leon, the word Brathwaite, last word in liberty. He is a retired engineer in the state of California. My name is Jason McPhee, and I'll be your host today. So uh, let's jump into it. Uh, you know, vaccines uh, and masks and COVID, uh, we sort of can't get away from that in the news. Um, recently, Joe Rogan kind of got himself in a little bit of hot water. <clears throat> and I think it's certainly worth talking about uh, just because of the religiosity around all this stuff. Um, Joe Rogan obviously has one of the biggest podcasts in the country. Um, he certainly has one of the largest podcast audiences. And <clears throat> he recently was on a podcast where he said that he wouldn't really recommend for young people to go get the vaccine. He thought, well, if you're healthy and, you know, and, and you know, maybe there's some risks involved, but I can't remember quite what the quote was, but essentially he had, he had sort of said, Hey, look, you know, there's some uncertainty and all that. And you, you're not in much risk from the, you know, COVID yourself, if you're young. Uh, and he meant like talking about like 21 year old or something like that. Uh, then, you know, he said, no, you know, it, w w why bother to get it? And so he sort of backtracked a little since he's gotten a lot of pressure on, uh, on that from a lot of places. Uh, but it, it is kind of interesting. I mean, here it's just somebody giving sort of their, you know, rough opinion. They're not a doctor, but it's just somebody who kind of can see what's happening out there in the world. And you know, you've got all these young people whose lives are kind of upended and they're talking about forcing these vaccines on people. And he's saying, well, you know, I, I you know, if I were young, I, I, you know, weigh the risks and I probably wouldn't get it. And, uh, and so the, the world comes down on him uh, because he has, uh, he has um, spoken, uh, uh, he is uh, heresy, <laughs> I guess heresy. is the correct yes. word. Yes. So, uh, yeah. So you guys have any thoughts on this? You know, you know, um, there's something wrong going on, very wrong in our society. We have some people out there who have ordained themselves as priests and priestess, I guess, of information and disinformation. They get to decide who is speaking this misinformation or disinformation. If you look at CDC data, Okay, it tells you, like, I believe in the United States is somewhere like 120, 130 people under the age of 21 who have died from this COVID. Okay, it's tragic, each one of them, because they have a brother or sister, or mother or father and all that. It is tragic. But when you look in the grand scheme of things, that is just a fraction of a fraction of 1% of, of the amount of people who would have gotten infected or even where all the infections occurred, okay? So the young people who are healthy, and this is what Joe Rogan made the point, young people who are healthy, well, they are not immune from the, from the disease, but they have shown resistance to the disease. Worse yet, young people die at higher rates from other things, car accidents for that matter. Why are we so upset when someone, well, a podcaster in this case, he's not a doctor, he made that clear, says this is something we should think about. Do we really need to be vaccinating people <clears throat> under 21 who are healthy? I mean, if there's somebody, have maybe they have childhood diabetes or they, or they have some other underlying disease or, or that kind of stuff, I can see the point with no problem. But I don't think you should call someone anti-vax. I don't, I don't know if they call them that, but they certainly implied it and call them some anti-vax just because they suggest that maybe we should reconsider this policy involving young people when there are other things that kill them at higher rates. It's just, it's just this woke nonsense, this woke religion that is tearing our country apart. 
Yeah. Um, well, I, I think, of course, and I'm sure Leon would agree that they have a right to uh, voice their opinion in disagreement with what Joe Rogan said. Without a doubt. Yeah, without, without a, a doubt. doubt. And uh, the one guy that wrote an article, uh, and he did have some background in the medical field, um, yeah, he, he made a, a good argument, I thought. Um, you know, it was a little, maybe a little over the top, uh, you know, but he was saying, okay, they're, they're not, it's the old mass thing. They're not getting the vaccine for them. They're getting it for other people, you know, the young people. So the young people that are, you know, they're, they're recommended to get the vaccine, uh, so that they will not transmit it to somebody else when, uh, they're the transmission rates between young people that uh, have an immune system that, that suppresses that, that virus right away is pretty low. And, uh, you know, not, I can see what they're saying, sure. Um, uh, you know, they, they make a good point. Okay, so if somebody wants to do it, and they're worried that they're going out to clubs. So his example was they're going out to clubs shouting YOLO. What does YOLO mean? Y-O-L-O? <laughs> anyway, no it mean, uh, means something. So apparently... Uh, all these uh, young people in these clubs yelling YOLO and spreading this uh, virus to other young people who who have a very, very low uh, incidence. I, I assume if they were to protect someone else, it would be as if the old people like myself would be in there, uh, you know, with the young kids. Like we go partying in the clubs with the young kids, right? And uh, so us old folks might get it from the young kids yelling yellow and we don't even know what that means you only and, live uh, once you, you only oh, live once you only live once <laughs> oh that's right there you go you only live once you only live once yeah. and so um yeah so i'm in there i don't even yeah. and now i know what it means and um i'm supposed to get it from them i guess uh but anyway it was still a good argument um and but Joe a good, has a, a good argument for taking the vaccine. Is that for what you're taking saying? the vaccine as a young person because you know okay. you're, you're trying you're trying to you know to to do whatever you can to stop it, and you don't want to as a young person who's not going to probably be infected if you have some uh, time during the disease phase <clears throat> where you can give it to someone else. You you want to reduce that, so that's their their reasoning behind it. And I, I thought that was, you know, whether I or not I agree with it, uh, 100 percent or 50 percent or whatever, it's um, it, it's a good argument, and they have a right to argue against what Joe is saying. And um, anyway, I, I'm just that's all I'm saying. It's um, it, it's uh, something that, you know, I'm glad. I hope that unlike us who have had two shows removed. Apparently, Joe Rogan makes enough money for Google that his uh, videos are uh, left up there while apparently yeah. us mere minions, minions, <laughs> uh, yeah. YouTube minions don't count enough that, that they got to nitpick our little itty bitty, you know, audience, you know, uh, to <laughs> our audience reach and, uh, uh, cancel us, but at least they didn't cancel Joe. So I'm happy for that. And uh, again, you know, it, it's good to debate this kind of stuff. That's what we're, I agree. Yes. You know, that, that's what we need to do. It's good to have Joe say what he wants to say. And it doesn't matter if he's uh, not an epidemiologist because the people making the decisions about getting the vaccine are not either. You know, do we have to be an epidemiologist to di decide what, whether or not what goes into our body and what doesn't, what stays out? No, no, it's up to us. So, you know, he's just voicing an opinion. So, you know, it's better that you have this back and forth instead of this other nonsense, this canceling and all that. You know, so, yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Lance. No, 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 go ahead. No, go ahead, Jason. It's okay. okay. Go ahead. Well, uh, you know, this is the crazy thing is because ultimately, you know, what, what science is supposed to be there for? It's supposed to be there for giving us, I guess, you know, knowledge about the risks of what we're doing, but not to make the decision about whether those risks are worth taking. That's exactly. not the decision of science. The decision of science is not to 
tell you how you should live your life. It's simply to give you uh, advice about how the real world works. And then it's up to you to decide what risks you're willing to take. And that's what a democracy is supposed to be about. It's not supposed to be about where we all bow down to a bunch of guys in white coats and they just simply tell us how to live. <laughs> you know, we're literally yes. supposed to. And that, that's part of a democracy is that we have conversations amongst ourselves and decide how we want to vote. And the idea that people want to shut somebody down, you know, it just and say that, well, you're not a scientist. Well, yeah, that's that's not the point. You know, a, so we don't get to talk now. We're not a democracy anymore. Is that kind of where we're going? You know, uh, we're just supposed to listen to a guy in a white coat and do everything he says. Yeah, that's a kind of a scary place that the, the left is sort of pushing us towards. And even when when Joe, Joe, Joe Rogan, who we all know is not a doctor, even when he made his, his his statement, he did point a little bit to some science, which is young, healthy people tend not to get the virus, tend not to transmit it. OK, I mean, he didn't say all that, but that, that was the implication of his statement. And if if those things are true and, and the science seemed to back that, then why you have to be upset about his statement to start with? Even though I will, I will concede to, uh, to Tim, what Tim just said was that everybody should be given equal opportunity to make their case for or against Rogan's statement. That's fine. I have no problem with that. But most of the, most of the statements that are being made is based on nothing but pure emotion. Absolutely. Nothing but pure emotion. They're not pointing to any sort of science about, well, uh, Tim raised the, um, that article that said about old people congregating in clubs and you know, shouting YOLO, which we now know is uh, you only live once. Sure, things like that happen. But even with those things, how many people die, young people die from the COVID? It's a very, 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 very small percentage. Not to say each one is not tragic. It is. But the percentage is very, 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 very small. Well, I mean, it's, it's probably about as tragic and as common as young people dying of the flu, I imagine. <laughs> and yet yet we, we don't we don't stop the world every flu season because, you know, we're afraid that, you know, uh, just a handful of people are going to succumb to it. So, I, you know, it's just it, it, this this world we're entering is a very scary world right now of, of, of what people are willing to, uh, you know, the, the liberties people are willing to uh, toss aside in the name of following the leader on safety. It's just, I don't know, it's pretty scary. It's, it's, it's like it's like we have to get to this utopia where there's no risk. Yeah. None. That's the only time we'll, we'll, we'll feel safe again. We have to get to this point where, oh my God, every everything is um is risk-free. We don't have to worry about anything. You know, like, like if we could ever get there, we can't. Yeah. Meanwhile, well, your, your surgeon graduated from a high school that didn't Teach calculus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Imagine that. And we should be worried. But Tim, you just raised a very good point. Maybe you didn't realize how important that point is. We should be worried about a surgeon who graduated from high school and never did calculus rather than Joe Rogan, who is not even a doctor, making a statement about COVID. Come on. <laughs> talk about having certain our priorities straight here. Well, you know, speaking of, you know, the kind of this crazy world we're living in of, of kind of no risk uh, uh, mentality, um, I, I've got a graphic I want to show up here. And it's uh, related to the it's uh, the CDC's uh, website on, on what they advise for wearing masks. And so here they show, you know, that if you are are fully vaccinated, here are the activities you can engage in and can't engage in now. I, I thought the point of a vaccine was that it made you immune to <laughs> the exactly. virus. And yet um, they're kind of showing you that there's a lot more things they think you shouldn't be doing without a mask than, than with a mask, which is kind of odd. And, um, you know, and there, there's I guess maybe it's even odder that they think there's a couple of things in their hyper safety uh, mind that people who uh, let's say they say you can walk and run in a, a wheelchair roll or a bike outside with members of your household. So they'll let you do that if you're unvaccinated, apparently, yeah, yeah. With, without a mask. <laughs> but, but, I mean, some of these things are, are just kind of like, you know, uh, dine at an outdoor restaurant uh, or here, here, attend a crowded outdoor event like a live performance parade or sports event. Now, here they have a mask on. And and um, if you're vaccinated, you probably are okay. You know, I, I don't, I'm not quite sure why they think you need that if you're vaccinated. But more to the point, 
they, these are the same guys who were kind of saying that if you um, wanted to go protest and burn down a business, you didn't have to okay. worry about a mask. <laughs> that was okay. That was okay. Oh, social, justice, social justice cure cures the disease. We know that, right? We know yeah. that. Well, yeah. I, mean, I remember the uh, mayor of Chicago standing out there, Lori Lightfoot, in, yeah. in a huge crowd of people, and she actually addressed the fact, well, I don't have a mask, but this is really important. <laughs> of course, of course. Social justice, social justice cures the disease. Don't you know yeah. that, Jason? you got to get that straight. Yeah, yeah. So um, anyways, yeah, yeah, just I thought this was interesting. I mean, it kind of shows the religiosity of, of where we're at with a lot of stuff. And uh um, you know, go to an uncrowded indoor shopping museum. Uh, you're vaccinated. You better wear a mask. I, I don't know. <laughs> you know when 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 they, when they put out. I mean, they're sending out all kind of messages, all kind of mixed messages here. So we are vaccinated. Okay. Yeah. I thought when you when you are vaccinated, you cannot transmit, nor can you get the the, the disease. I thought that is what being vaccinated meant. I see Joe Biden is walking around. He's fully vaccinated. He was vaccinated before he took office. He's fully vaccinated, but he walks around with a mask. Mm -hmm. Now, what does that tell people? You don't believe in the vaccine? What, what exactly are you saying by wearing this mask after you've been fully vaccinated? I don't um, understand this. Well, well, and and here's, here's a really fun one. Um, it says, attend a small indoor gathering of fully vaccinated and unvaccinated people uh, from multiple households. Uh, that was kind of like when Joe Biden recently visited Jimmy Carter and his wife, <laughs> and they stood there for a uh, very strange image. I, unfortunately, I didn't get that image for the show here, but uh, but it was a very strange image of where they look like giants and, and Jimmy Carter and his <laughs> wife look like midgets or, or uh, you know, I guess um, hobbits or something. Yeah. It's really, really uh, uh, bizarre. But the main thing was none of them were wearing masks. And, you know, yeah. according to the CDC, they're supposed to be wearing masks. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, this is just, I don't know. And then, and then the funny thing was he put on a mask when he left, which was really funny. I guess maybe he thought there'd be more cameras outside than inside. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> But but you know, well this is so bizarre. Joe Biden was at a at a at a, at a some event, I believe in some campaign rally. Well it wasn't a campaign rally, but some kind of rally in Georgia, I, I believe it was. After he was finished, he apparently has put his mask somewhere and he couldn't remember where he put it. He lost it. He's in a panic at this at the podium <laughs> trying to find his mask. Oh, I lost my mask. I'm gonna be in trouble. <laughs> the man is fully vaccinated and he's worried about this. <laughs> this is so bizarre. <laughs> yeah, it, it's hard to imagine, uh, uh, you know, somebody like Trump having been panicked for, you know, losing his mask. <laughs> I think that's a huge juxtaposition there between the two. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it's, it's funny. Uh, you know, you look at the kind of religiosity going on here around some of this stuff with the CDC. And, I mean, it makes you wonder, you know, how much science is going on with a lot of this stuff. And recently with the schools. Uh, they had an, an issue where it turned out that, you know, they had a, a policy. In fact, I think the, the director of CDC came out fairly early and said that she thought that school should be going. And then suddenly the White House came came out and said, oh, that was just her personal opinion. And then yes. they came out after they got some guidance from the schools <laughs> and the teachers <laughs> union. And, and after the teachers union told them about the science, then they told every, then the CDC <laughs> told the rest of us about the science right. and how we just couldn't start the schools back up, you know, right now. <laughs> So I don't know. You guys have any thoughts on this uh, this whole scandal with the uh, uh, the teachers union uh, sort of running the science at the CDC? Uh, well, you know the 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 pilots uh, that are out of work aren't uh, calling up the CDC saying, you know, we don't want to be um, uh, we don't think it's safe to go fly airplanes and be uh, in, in the same aluminum tube with a bunch of other people that really may be contagious uh, as opposed to little kids. So uh, there must be something different a bit between a pilot who wants to go back to work and uh, is not influencing the CDC with emails and so on and uh, or a pilot's union and the teacher's union that is influencing the CDC when they're saying things that are completely uh, unscientific 
to try to prove to uh, or, or try to um, uh, influence the the direction of opening schools in, in America. So yeah, it's it's really um, telling apparently about teachers in particular. It's 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 it's, it's quite bizarre, you know. But if you take a step back, you know. The CDC has become nothing but a, a political tool. Seriously. Mm -hmm. If you remember, very early in the pandemic, they were talking about using hydroxychloroquine with zinc to be a therapeutic for the COVID virus. And <laughs> oh boy, it was everything was going, everything it, it looked like they were going to do it. But then suddenly Donald Trump came out and said, This is a game changer. And then everybody, including the CDC, started to talk, oh, you know, hydroxychloroquine is a dangerous drug. We've been using this thing for like 55 years in this country. I think over a billion doses or some extraordinary number like that have been used. But suddenly it became dangerous because Donald Trump said it may be a game changer. Yeah, that, CDC, red -haired, that red haired non scientist, Donald Trump. <laughs> exactly. exactly. How dare he? <laughs> yes, how dare he say a thing like that? But the CDC first gave author, um, authorization for its use, but then they, they revoked it. <laughs> then we have this woman here, I forgot her name, Wal Walinsky or whatever her name is. She comes out and say, oh, you could open back the schools. The teachers don't have to be vaccinated. It's not a problem. And all of a sudden, the White House said, oh, no, 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 no. She was speaking in a personal capacity. Now, what kind of crap is that? Yeah. Isn't she not the CDC when she's speaking at all times? Well, oh, and, 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 and isn't the White House supposed to get their science from the CDC and not the other way around? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. But then, I didn't, know, I didn't know Joe Biden had a chemistry set going on. I didn't know that either. <laughs> maybe he has one. Maybe he has one in the basement, and he forgot to and he forgot to tell us about it. We, yeah. we don't know. Yeah, I mean, uh, they they always put that out there that you can't have an opinion about about anything unless you're in the pedia or whatever they are what, what, uh, disease yeah go ahead Jason. Well, i was just gonna say we're, 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 i didn't, wasn't sure if you were about to stop but I, I was gonna say remember he's busy at work there in the oval office trying to cure cancer as well yeah that's true. <laughs> <laughs> he's got all the beakers and the bunsen burners <laughs> so uh if if uh you know, somebody does like a Joe Rogan or somebody doesn't have a good opinion. Why all of a sudden do the teachers unions have such a, uh, an important voice when they don't have that training? Exactly. Uh, you know, so so why can't they why don't they turn around and use it on them? Oh, could it be that they contribute so much money to Democratic political campaigns? Just the point. Could that be Just it? the point. Right. <laughs> Joe Rogan says it. And we have a meltdown you know they left me they have a meltdown okay the cdc now say well we don't have to open we open schools and all of a sudden everybody's fine with that including the white house yeah. everybody's fine with it it's cool the cdc right. uh, of course yeah it, we know that you mean after being um uh, uh what am i affected by the uh teachers union Yes, the emails Influence. of the teachers' union. Influence. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yes. No, I'm sorry. I, I cut myself short because of knuckling noise patrol. But you're okay. right, Tim. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's about time for our knucklehead noise patrol. And so. Ah, there, there goes the sound. <laughs> I'm lots of trouble with that knucklehead sound. <laughs> but, uh, you know, speaking of other knuckleheads we're having trouble with the sound from, and that's uh, uh, Fauci. And Fauci is just kind of, uh, he, he doesn't want to go away. Uh, you know, he's been around for a year. He's getting pretty comfortable. And so this, this Mother's Day, he was interviewed on a few different uh, channels. And, and uh, when asked about uh, Mother's Day and masks, uh, he seems to be indicating that, you know, we're, we're in for masks potentially for, for a lot longer, or at least he would like to see us in masks for a lot longer. So here's on Meet the Press. He said, I think people have gotten used to the fact that mask wearing, clearly, if you look at the data, diminishes respiratory diseases. Uh, we've had practically non-existent flu season uh, this uh, year, merely because people are <clears throat> were doing the kinds of public uh, health things uh, that we directed predominantly against COVID-19. So it's conceivable 
uh, that as we go on a year or two more from now, that during certain seasonal periods, when you have respiratory borne viruses like the flu, people might actually elect to wear masks. And then he said on this week, uh, he says, I hope that next Mother's Day, we're going to see a dramatic difference uh, than what we're seeing right now. I believe that we will be about as close to back to normal as we can. Um, and uh, But there's conditions to that. Uh, but we've got to make sure that we get the overwhelming proportion of the population vaccinated. But, I, you know, bottom line is he, he's kind of thinking like next year, next year. And, you know, he's I mean, he's thinking years ahead. He you know, has ahead, just, yes. He's not just thinking, you know, like, hey, remember, this was a two week process when we started yeah. this whole thing. This yeah. was a two week proposal. Yeah. And he's got his, his vision is, is long term. So I don't know. You guys have any thoughts about Fauci, forever Fauci? Forever Fauci. Well, you know, he, he probably has a, a point. You know, I've had a, a pretty healthy year myself when I normally get some kind of flu virus you know, during the year, but this year I have it. Um, and maybe it's because of the mass and so on and so <laughs> forth. But, uh, you know, if we're going to use the same uh, logic, let's let's bring the uh, speed limit in the country down to 45 miles an hour tops in the, on the freeways. You know, that'll save a lot of lives. And why, and not <laughs> yeah. Yeah, why, why not 15? Why not 15? True. Why not 15? You know, um, so, yeah, uh, well, of course, you know, it's just, but, but uh, you also have to look at the other downsides besides a 45 mile an hour speed limit, especially 15, but a 45 uh, being, not being conducive to people getting where they need to go and, and to get the economy humming along at its, its normal pace uh, because we're, we're moving around quick and, and it's, it's good. I get to work. I spend less time in the car and that's unproductive time. Uh, and so I, I'm able to do productive activities um, and and get going uh, with higher speed limits. Uh, so and the same thing with mass, you know, we, we don't get the the uh, human interaction of looking at a full face instead of this face with a covering on it. And so we don't get all those little perks that that are unknown. Half of them probably still. I mean, we're, we're finding out more and more about the depression levels and suicide uh, frequencies uh, changing because of all this. And, uh, and, and, a, and a mask hides a frown too. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So you, you say so you don't know, does that, is that guy smiling at me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Or is he, or is yeah, he cursing so, at you? Is he cursing at you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So all these little cues of uh, of um, communication that we have are gone with these masks. So okay, there's downside that way. Um, probably other downsides related to wearing masks that you know. Let's let's face it, people aren't changing them like the CDC recommends. Washing them every day and changing them every day at least. I mean, sometimes even more often. Uh, and not touching it and this, that, and the other thing. So we're, we're all violating every rule they have on there. And, oh, here we are. Well, oh. Speaking of violating rules, we are about out of time here. We've about violated our time limit. But uh, <laughs> thanks so much for joining us, and we hope you'll join us for the next one. Until then, stay free. Thank you for watching the Knuckleheads of Liberty. Listen each week in Sacramento on Comcast Channel 17 for Knuckleheads of Liberty on Monday at 5.30 p.m and the Libertarian Counterpoint Show on Thursday at 8 p.m.